All right, we are gonna do concept 42 teacher talk. Um, the first essential, sorry, the first set here um, is just wanting us to circle our factors and box our solutions, okay? So remember our factors are the things that are in parentheses before we set each of them equal to zero to solve. So those would be our factors. Um, then we set each of those equal to zero as our next step here. And whenever we solved each of those equations, we got our solutions, which we will box here. So our two solutions here are three and negative one half. All right, that is all we need to do for set one. So let's move into set two. All right. For this first one, remember, before we go to factor anything, it has to be equal to zero. So right now, this is equal to negative 10. To get this equal to zero, we need to add this 10 over to the other side of our equation. So this now gives us x squared minus 11x plus 10, and this negative 10 and positive 10 cancel out, so we're left with zero on that side. All right, from here, we can create our big x, and start thinking of factors. So remember on the top um, is our a times c, so that is our one times 10, which gives us 10, okay? And then on the bottom is our b value, which here we have is negative 11. Okay, so for our factors, we want them to add together to get negative 11 and multiply together to get positive 10, okay? I'll give you a couple seconds to think about what factors you would want to use here. Hopefully you have come up with negative 10 and negative 1. Whenever I multiply those together, a negative times a negative gives me positive 10. And if I'm adding negative 10 plus negative 1, I do get negative 11. So now that we checked those, I'm going to rewrite my equation here with my new factors within my equation, okay? So just to check this, if I were to combine negative 10 and negative one, I would get back to this negative 11 X, okay? You always wanna make sure that is true before proceeding here. Okay, from here, I'm going to split my equation down the middle, okay? On the left-hand side, I can take an X out of both of these terms. Now open a parenthesis. X times something is going to get me back to X squared. X times X is going to get me back to X squared. Now X times something is going to get me back to negative 10 X. I know that I need to add an extra negative 10. So that is my first um, grouping that I'm doing. Now if I go over to this other side, the only thing that I can take out of these two terms is a negative one, okay? Now, to get back to a negative one x, I need to multiply negative one by x. And then to get to a positive 10, I would need to multiply negative one by negative 10 to get that positive, okay? Now, the important thing here that we wanna check is to make sure our two groups within our parentheses are the same and we do have x minus 10 in both parentheses, so that is good. We've gotten the correct answer so far. So from here, we are taking both of our groupings, so this side or whichever side, it doesn't matter, this side is gonna have x minus 10, and then we are making a group out of these other two terms that we have on the outside of our, out of, out of our groupings. So we have x and negative one, so x minus one is going to be my other grouping. Okay, now, like we used in set one, those are our factors, x minus one, x minus 10. Now to proceed to get solutions, we have to set each of these equal to zero. So we set x minus one equal to zero, and we set x minus 10 equal to zero. And since these are both negative, we're just going to add them to the other side, cancel that out, and we would get x equals one. Same thing for the 10 add it to both sides, x equals positive 10. So these 
oops, let's use yellow. These are our two solutions. Okay. All right, for this next one, I encourage you to pause the video and I want you to try it on your own um, and then play the video back and see if you got the correct answer. So this one is already set to e set equal to zero, so we don't have to do any rearranging. We can just go ahead and start with our big X. Now, remember on the top here, we are multiplying our A times our C. So our A is two and our C is negative three. When I multiply those together, I get negative six. And then my B is that middle term, negative five. Okay, so again, I need something that adds to negative five and multiplies to negative six. I'll give you a second. Um, hopefully that you thought of negative six and one. If I add those together, I do get negative five. If I multiply them together, I get negative six. Now that I have tested that, I'm gonna rewrite my equation with those two new terms in the middle. So I now have negative six X plus one X minus three equals zero. And then again, we wanna check that if we do negative six X plus one X, we do get back to negative five X. And that is true, so we are good to proceed. Okay, so now I'm gonna split my equation again. On the left-hand side, I can take a 2x out of both of those terms. To get back to 2x squared, I need to multiply that by an x. And to get back to negative 6x, I need to multiply that by a negative 3. Okay? The only thing that I can take out of the right-hand side is just a 1. To get back to 1x, I need to multiply 1 by an x. And then to get to negative 3, I need to multiply by a negative 3. And again, we're checking our x minus three, x minus three, those groupings are the same. So we're gonna use that as one of our groups. And then we're gonna make that other one out of the two x and the positive one for our other, okay? So remember, these are our factors. We have two x plus one and x minus three. Now the last step here is to set each of them equal to zero to get our solution. So we have two x plus one equals zero and x minus three equals zero. Um, 2x plus 1 equals 0. We need to subtract the 1. We're undoing some addition. This gives us negative 1 on the right and 2x left on the left. Last step here, we need to divide. Oops. All right. We are left with negative 1 half. Then our next solution, we are just going to add the 3 to both sides and we get x equals 3. So we have x equals 3, x equals negative 1 half as our two solutions. All right, to set 3 here, um, write a quadratic equation that has a solution of x equals negative 5 and a factor of x plus 1, okay? So our factor is x plus 1. So that means at the end of our grouping, so if we were looking at this first one, our end of our grouping is here. So one of these factors has to be x plus five, or x plus one, and then one of our solutions has to be x equals negative five. So if I were to write that, I would have to do x plus one. My other factor, if I'm getting x equals negative five as my solution, then x plus five needs to be my other factor. The reason I know that is because if I were to set x plus five equal to zero, and if I were to solve for that, I would get x equals negative five, okay? So here are my two factors. They want us to write our quadratic equation. So to do that, we're going to undo our factoring. We're going to FOIL or distribute each of these terms back out to get a long fraction. So x times x gives us x squared. x times 5 gives us 5x. Okay, so we are done with that first term. We need to move on to the 1. So 1 times x gives us x. 1 times 5 gives us 5 equal to 0. Now the last step we need to do is combine these like terms. So we now have x squared 
plus 6x plus 5 equals 0. Okay? That would be our quadratic equation that would have a solution of x equals negative 5 and a factor of x plus 1. Alrighty, here is our last question for this teacher talk. Set 4. You're standing on the top of a rock that is 48 feet higher than a pool of water below. You throw an object up into the air at a rate of 32 feet per second. How long will it take for the object to reach the pool? The equation for this situation is negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 48 equals 0. Now, to solve this for t time to figure out how long it will take for the object to reach the pool, we need to factor and find our two solutions. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. And as I'm rewriting, I'm noticing that all three of my terms, negative 16, 32, and 48, um, they all have a GCF that I could take out of those. So I know that 16 goes into all of those. So I'm going to take a 16 out of each of my terms. So if I take 16 out of negative 16, I'm left with the negative t squared. If I take 16 out of 32, I'm left with 2t. And then taking a 16 out of 48, I'm left with 3. Let me move this over. Okay, so from here, I'm going to factor with my big X. So I'm going to draw that. My A times my C is going to be negative 1 times 3, which gives me negative 3. And then my B is 2. So I need something that adds to 2 multiplies to 3. So I am thinking 3 and negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite this now with those in the middle. So I have negative t squared and now I'm going to do negative oops, sorry. plus 3t minus t plus 3 equals 0. Okay, ready to split that down the middle. Now, on the left-hand side, the only thing that I can take out here is a negative t. And to get back to negative t squared, I just need another t. And to get back to positive 3 squared, I need a negative 3. Okay. Then on this other side, the only thing I can take out here is a negative 1. To get back to a negative t, I just need t. And to get to a positive 3, I need a negative 3. Alrighty, so here, notice our groupings are the same. We have t minus 3 in both. So our two groups, we have 16 on the outside. Don't forget about that. Then we have negative t minus 1 as our first grouping and t minus 3 as our second. Okay. Alright, so we know that 16 does not equal 0. So that is not a solution. The other options we have are negative t minus 1 equals 0. Let me write these in red as I was doing last time. We have negative t minus 1 equals 0, and we have t minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so if we were to go about solving these, I would add 1 to both sides here, and I would have negative t equals positive 1. Then I need to divide this by negative 1 to get rid of that negative, and I want positive t, which that would give me negative 1. Then this next equation, I'm adding the 3 to both sides leaving me with t equals 3. Now, looking back at this equation, we're talking about time. Can we have a negative time? No. So our positive answer, t equals 3, is going to be how long it will take for the object to reach the pool. Okay? And that is all for Concept 42 Teacher Talk. Um, you are ready to move on to your practice if you have no more questions.